Hello everyone. In this video, we will begin chapter 3, the diets. We will begin by discussing the characteristics of diets and how to analyze and design circuit containing multiple diets together with resistors and DC sources to realize useful and interesting nonlinear functions. So far, we have dealt almost entirely with linear circuits. In this chapter, we will take the simplest and most fundamental nonlinear circuit element, the diode. Just like a resistor, a diode um, has two terminals. Okay, the circuit symbol of the diode is as follows. But unlike the resistor, which has a linear, this is a resistance, it has a linear I and V. It has a linear straight line relationship between the current flowing through it and the voltage appearing across it. The diode, however, has a nonlinear IV characteristic, which I will show you in a moment. In order to understand the essence of the diode function, we will begin with the ideal diode. Ideal diodes. We then we we then introduced the silicon junction diode, i.e., the non-ideal diode, and we will explain its terminal characteristics and provide techniques for the analysis of diode circuits. The diode. The junction diode, i.e. the non-ideal diodes, is nothing more than a p-n junction. So, um, what's actually inside a uh, non-ideal diode is a p-n junction, which we studied in chapter 1. Okay, and we said it has two terminals. The positive terminal is referred to it as the anode. This is the anode, which is the positive terminal. And this is the cathode, which is the negative terminal. Okay, anode and cathode. Positive and negative. And as we said, the p-type silicon is positive, has majority of positives, majority of holes, and the n-type silicon has majority of electrons. Okay, so this entire thing is actually the junction diode. Okay, this is the non-ideal diode. Okay. Let's begin. So the ideal diode has two modes of operation. It's either on or off. What will happen to or what will happen to the diode if it's on and how does it become on? Now this is the our diode. Okay, and let's say this is let's label this A and B. Okay. If the voltage at A is greater than the voltage at point B, then the diode is said to be forward bias. Forward bias. Or on okay now if voltage at a is greater than the voltage at b then the current the flow of current will be in this direction why because current always moves from high potential to low potential and if the diode is on then the diode will be equivalent to a short circuit okay now in a short circuit what is the voltage drop across a short circuit it's zero so the voltage drop across the diode when when it's ideal it's a short circuit let's take the other case when the voltage at point b is greater than the voltage at point a what will happen the diode will be off okay so, be, so that because the direction of the current is in the opposite direction as the diode okay and this is the voltage drop across the diode let me write this down. If the voltage B is greater than point A, then the diode 
is said to be reverse bias or off okay there's no need for this okay moving on so if the diet is off it's equivalent to an open circuit as it's preventing current from flowing in the opposite direction okay this is the voltage drop vd and id is equal to zero or the current in the circuit will be equal to zero okay now let's translate this this is point a this is point b let's translate these two cases into an iv characteristic which we said earlier that it's non-ideal uh, sorry it's non-linear so the iv characteristic of an ideal diet okay it's as follows i and v great now when the diet is on this means voltage at point a is greater than the voltage at point b so vd is positive when vd positive i mean positive side now um in the positive side what is the voltage the voltage is always equal to zero because the diode will be converted to a short circuit so the voltage will always be equal to zero okay now in the negative case when voltage b is greater than voltage a so the voltage drop across the diode is negative okay there will be voltage however there will be no current so the x value is zero so there's the current is always equal to zero however there is voltage okay this is the ideal characteristic of an ideal diet and as can be evident the iv characteristic of the ideal diet is highly nonlinear okay now there's a circuit called the rectifier one of the many applications of diets is the design of rectifiers which converts ac to dc Okay, rectifiers is one of the most common applications. So one application is the rectifier. One application is the rectifier. Okay. What is an rectifier? What does it consist? It consists of voltage source with a diode and resistance in series okay let's analyze this circuit let's see the behavior of the output now again we're talking about ideal diodes okay in the next video we will discuss the non-ideal diodes let's say the question is to draw or to sketch the waveform of the output okay how do we start we always start by plotting the reference, which is VI, the waveform of the reference. So far, we do not have numbers, so we will do a general sketch, a general sinusoidal sketch of the input. We will say that this peak value is VI and this peak value is minus VI. Okay? This is the voltage drop across the diode. Now, then we will say there are two cases. If vi is positive if vi is negative there are two cases for vi it's either positive or negative right okay if vi is positive how current how is current flowing through the circuit it's flowing in the clockwise direction right okay now is diode on or off in this case it's on why because the voltage at this point is greater than the voltage at this point the uh, the voltage at the anode is greater than the voltage at the cathode which makes the current to flow in this direction so diode in this case is on and we said whenever the diode is on the ideal diode is on the diode gets um, replaced with what a short circuit okay so this is our short circuit v the output and here we have the voltage drop across the diode 
Okay. Now, what is the output in terms of the input? You're equal. The output is equal to the input. Okay. Now, moving on to the other case, the negative case, the output. Let's pick another color, a color which we didn't use. Okay. So if VI is negative, the current flow is flowing in the anti-clockwise direction. Okay. Now, what does this mean? This means that the current is facing the diode. Okay meaning that this voltage the voltage at the cathode is greater than the voltage at the anode which means again that the diode is off and hence the diode will be replaced with an open circuit vi open circuit this is the resistance okay and the output okay what is the output in this case the output in this case is zero why is it zero? Let's see. I will show it to you. Now, the output is the voltage drop across the resistance, right? It's the voltage at this point minus the voltage at this point. What is the voltage at the negative side of the output? It's zero because it's grounded, okay? Now, there's no current because there's an open circuit. And if there's no current, the resistance is useless as if it's what a short circuit and if, it's a sh and if it is a short circuit and this point is zero then this point is also zero because it's a short circuit the voltage at a short circuit is the same so it's zero minus zero which is equal to zero okay great moving on now we need to plot the waveform this is time and this is the output. My advice to you is to put VI as a dotted line as a reference for you actually, so you don't mess up the curve, the output curve. So this is the dotted line, this is the input. Now the output, let's see how we are going to plot. If VI is positive, this means it's this side, right? VI is positive. If VI is positive, what is, what is, the out sorry here I, I should have written vi the output equal to vi right so if vi is positive what is the output the output is actually v input so we are going to draw the output on top of our reference okay for the negative side when vi is negative what is the output the output this is the negative this is neg the negative side this is the negative side okay for this negative side what is the output the output is actually zero it's actually zero okay let me draw it in a different color so you can differentiate between the two cases so whenever you have the input in the negative side it will be replaced with zero so this is actually the waveform of an ideal diet in a rectifier circuit okay i hope you you have understood this now the output voltage is unidirectional and has a finite average value or a dc component thus the circuit rectifies the signal and hence called a rectifier it can be used to generate dc from ac another application of diet as digital logic gates another application is another application is diet logic gates okay there are two types or the most simple Logic gates are OR gate and AND gate. Let's discuss them. Diodes, along with resistors, can be used to implement a digital logic function. Let's start with the OR gate. The OR gate. Now, the circuit symbol of an OR gate we're used to with as follows, right? This is the output, and those are the inputs. Let's take three input case. Okay, the circuit is like this 
this is a three input or gate diode and resistance it's a company the or gate the logical gates are in terms of diodes and resistors this is the output and those are the inputs vb vc here we have va vb vc and vy okay now what is the truth table of an or gate a three input or gate three zeros Zero and one 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 which represents a seven so all the outputs are zeros except uh, sorry only the first whenever you have all zeros then the output will be zero and whenever you have at least one one then the output will be one okay now let's say the inputs here are five volt zero volt and five volt this case represents which row in the truth table it represents the one zero one right because a five volt is one is one in logic and zero volt is zero logic. Okay, so how will the OR gate operate? Now the highest voltage will move in. So here this will be five volt. Again, the highest voltage will move in uh, inside uh, to the other side. So this point is five volt. If this is five volt, what is this point? It's also 5 volt. Why? I'll discuss in a moment. Actually, this is a straight wire. So if any point at this wire is 0, is 5 volt, sorry, then every, every point on this wire will be 5 volt. Now, at the same time, if this is 5 volt and this is 5 volt, this diode is on or off? It's actually on. Okay? Because the anode is greater than or equal to the cathode. Okay? So here, if you want, we can see greater than or equal to the cathode, it will be on. Okay, what about this diode? Will it be on or off? It's off, right? Because here 5 volt and into the anode, the anode is zero. So the direction of current is in this direction and it's opposing the diode, so it's off. Oh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> sorry, I was sorry. No problem. What about this diode? Excuse me for this. Let's continue. Now, what about this diode? This diode is actually on, okay? Because the anode, the value at the anode and the cathode are equal. So the circuit will be like this. Short circuit, here we have an open circuit. Let's use this. Again, short circuit, resistance and ground. This is Vy, Va, Vb, Vc. Okay, what is Vy? Vy is equal to 5 volt, and if you want to calculate the current, it's, and let's say R is 1 kilo ohm, I is equal to what? It's equal to 5 minus 0, okay, 5 minus 0, which is this point, 5 minus 0, divided by 1k. This will give us 5 milliampere, okay? Let's take another example. Let's take another example. Again, we have three input or gate resistance. Okay. The voltage at this point is two volt, three volt, and zero volt okay which voltage will first move in the highest voltage which is three volts so this value is three volt this is vy okay and this is i and r let's say is one kilo ohm okay no if this is three volt this point will also be three volt and this will be the same this side is off this diode is off and this is the only diode that will be on okay so vy is equal to 3 volt and i is equal to 3 minus 0 divided by 1k which 
is equal to 3 milliampere. Okay, so to summarize, in OR gates, we always we always pick the largest voltage. Do you know why we are always taking the highest voltage? Okay, it's because current always moves from the highest potential to the lowest potential. Or current always moves from the highest potential to the lowest potential. Now the lowest potential is fixed, it's zero volt. However, on the input, you have options. You have, you have, you have to choose which is the highest. So that's why we're taking the highest voltage so that current can move from highest to the lowest. Okay, moving on to the other logic gate, which is AND gate. AND gate. The circuit block of the AND gate is like this. And let's discuss also the three input AND gate. Okay. Taking the following example, the, first of all, the, the circuit block of the AND gate is as follows. The diodes are below the resistance unlike the OR gate where the diodes were above the resistance and at the same time another difference is that the diode is in the reverse direction is in the opposite direction okay so this is an AND gate this is 5 volt okay VA VB and VC this is V Y and this is the direction of the current okay so current as we said before always moves from the highest potential to the lowest so guess here which voltage are we going to pick we're going to pick the lowest or the highest of course we're going to take the lowest voltage why because the, we want the current to move from the highest point to the lowest point okay from the highest point to the lowest point so this has to be the direction of the current okay so here this point will be zero volt this point will also be zero volt because it's a wire okay hence this diode will be off because the direction of the current will be from high potential to low potential off it's an open circuit there's no current okay and this is the same thing off and this is the only diode that is on so vy is equal to um, it's equal to zero volt and i is equal to five minus zero over one k if we said that r is one kilo ohm which will give us five milli ampere okay now i forgot to write the truth table of the and gate but it's simple you already know this i think I'm assuming that you already know the truth table of the AND gate. Triple zeros. Okay. Okay. So the outputs are all zeros except the last row, which is one. Okay. Now. Let's take another example. Let's say VA is 2 volt, VB is 3 volt, and VC is 4 volt. Okay, picking the lowest voltage, which is 2 volt, so VY is actually 2. Okay, VY is 2 volt, and if we say that R is 1 kilo ohm and you want to calculate the current. I is equal to 5 highest potential minus the lowest potential divided by 1k which is equal to 3 milliampere okay so to summarize the AND gate 
we will say that in AND gate we always pick the lowest voltage. Okay. Great. Now let's take an example. Copy. Okay. What does this question say? It says for the circuit, this is the circuit, sketch the transfer characteristic V output versus V I. Okay. So, sorry, the circuit, this is the answer actually. That's the answer. So if you want edit, we can crop it. Okay. It can go smaller than this size. This is the first time I know this. Anyhow, so we need to draw the transfer function of this circuit. This is the circuit. VI, there's a diode and a resistance, the output. If you remember, we just drew the waveform of the output. Now they need the transfer characteristic. So as I said before, how do we start? We start with the reference, reference of the input time the input and as we do not have numbers we will draw the general sinusoidal waveform where this is vi and this is minus vi okay next we will put the two cases we will say if vi is positive if vi is negative always whenever they ask you to draw graphing or to sketch in diodes do these two steps first step is to draw the reference second step is to say if vi is positive and vi is negative now if vi is positive the diode is flow sorry the current is flowing in the clockwise direction hence the diode is on and if the diode is on it it's replaced with what a short circuit okay vi short circuit R and V output. What is V output in this case? V output is equal to V input. I got it right this time. <laughs> if you remember last time I wrote V output equal to V output. Anyhow, so if VI is negative, the current is flowing in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise, and the diode is off. And if the diode is off, it will be replaced by what? An open circuit and in an open circuit the output is equal to zero because there is no current and the resistance is useless and if the resistance is replaced with a short circuit then voltage drop across a short circuit is zero anyhow after we have found the output in both cases now it's time to sketch the transfer characteristic which is the output versus the input Okay, in the positive side, in the positive side, which is this side. Now we are talking left and right. In the waveform, we were talking top and bottom. Waveform, we're saying VI positive and VI negative, which is top and bottom. Here, VI positive is on the right side and VI negative is on the left side. Okay, let's continue. Let's erase these two rectangles. Okay, so if VI is positive, if VI is positive, what is V output? V output is actually VI. So if VI is 1, V output is 1. If VI is 2, V output is 2. Okay, so the graph will be like this, or the line will be like this. It's a diagonal line. And if VI is negative, V output is 0. And if V output is 0, then it will be like this. Okay. Moving on, taking another example, we will now draw the waveform of VD, VD which is the voltage drop across the diode. Okay, let's do the same thing on a new page. Now we need what? The voltage drop across the diode, sorry, the waveform across the diode. 
So sketch or draw the waveform of V D. Okay. Now the circuit is as follows: V I diet and resistance, which is a rectifier, right? This is V D and this is V O. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do in order to sketch is the reference as usual. VI and minus VI. Then we will say if VI is positive and if VI is negative. If VI is positive, the current is flowing in the clockwise direction, hence the diode is on. And if the diode is on, it will be represented as a short circuit. Okay, so V output in this case is equal to V input. However, we are not looking for V output, we are looking for VD, which is here. So what is the voltage drop here? It's actually zero. Why? Because it's the voltage drop across a short circuit. Okay. The voltage here is the same as the voltage here, which is VI minus VI, which is equal to zero. Moving on. If VI is negative, this means the current is moving anticlockwise. And if it's moving anticlockwise, it's facing the diode, and hence the diode is off. And if the diode is off, it will be represented as a open circuit. Hence, no current. Okay. What is VD? VD, if you do it this way, the probability of getting it wrong is minimized. Okay, so it says that VD is the voltage at this point minus the voltage at this point. Okay, the voltage at this point is VI and the voltage at this point is VO. And we already know that VO is equal to zero because there's no current and there's no resistance. Okay. So it's equal to VI minus VO, which is equal to VI minus zero. Hence, it's only VI. Okay. Now, let's draw the waveform. The waveform of VD with respect to time. The first thing to do is to draw the reference as a dotted line. Okay. Let's draw the reference of the input as a dotted line line this is vi and this is minus vi okay if vi is positive if vi is positive what is vd vd is zero so whenever vi is positive we will replace it with a zero okay now if vi is negative if vi is negative what is vd VD is actually VI, so we'll just highlight our reference, okay? So this is the waveform, okay? Now, if you notice, the waveform of V output was like this, okay? This was the waveform of V output with respect to time. <coughs> Sorry, pardon me. Now, the sum of VD and the output is actually the VI, the original input waveform. Okay? They complete each other. Let's move on and take another example. Let's take this example. Cut. Okay. So the question says, for this circuit shown, shows us uh, this circuit has a voltage source, a DC battery of 12 volt. If Vs is a sinusoid with 24 volt peak amplitude, find the fraction of each cycle during which the diode conducts. Okay, let's ignore this requirement. Also, find the peak value of the diode current the maximum reverse bias voltage that appears across the diode. So, how do we calculate the current? The peak value current, okay? 
the peak value current first we need to see what is the peak input voltage which is vs the peak and vo input voltage is 24 24 and minus 24 okay so it will be 24 minus this value 12 um, actually I have messed it up okay so this is vi we need to do ohms law this is vi and the peak value is 24 the other side is 12 and we're saying that the diode is on so it's a short circuit hence this is also 12 so the id is 24 minus 12 divided by the resistance which is equal to 0 0.12 ampere okay this is the peak value diode current now we need to find the maximum reverse bias voltage what is the maximum reverse bias voltage it's actually asking for the ability of the diode to to prevent what's the, what's the ability of the diode to prevent like how much voltage is it able to prevent so in order to see how many or how much voltage is the diode able to prevent we need to first know when is the diode on now the diode will be on whenever the voltage at the anode is greater than the voltage at the cathode now the voltage at the cathode is fixed at 12 okay however at the anode it's varying due to the vs the input voltage so let me redraw the waveform of the input or vs it's 24 to minus 24 right the diode will be on when the anode is greater than the cathode okay so here if vs is 12 and greater so here if this point is greater than or equal to 12 the diode is on so when will it be off it's this entire thing okay so what is the amplitude here the amplitude here is 12 here and 24 this is minus 24 actually this is 24 so 12 plus 24 will be equal to 36 volt so this is the answer so the maximum reverse voltage is equal to 36 volt okay let's move on let's take another example cut paste okay for the values find the values of i and v in the circuits shown in the following figure now let's begin with part a we need to find i and v now in order to find i and v we need first to know if the diode is on or off how can we know if the diode is on or off we need to check the physical current the physical current is like this how did i know that this is the physical current now the physical current is the actual current moving in the circuit and the current moves always from high potential to low potential this is the high potential and this is the low potential so the physical current is from upwards to downwards now you can't always depend on this current why because it's the instructor's current he can swap it for you it's just a number Okay, it could be negative also so we need to check the physical current in this case the diode is on if the diode is on it will be a short circuit okay so here's our short circuit this is v and this is i in this case what is v v is the voltage at the positive or at this point minus the voltage at this point so v is equal to v plus minus v minus which is equal to what this is zero and this will be of course zero right because there's nothing in between so zero minus zero is zero and at the same time we're measuring the voltage drop across a short circuit which is zero again now what is i i is equal to the high potential five minus the low potential which is zero five minus zero divided by 2.5 k which is equal to two milli ampere we're done with the first part 
Moving on to the second part. Again, we need to check the physical current. Where's the physical current? From high potential to low potential. So the physical current is in this direction. Current, okay. So the diode is on, uh, the diode, sorry, is off. So if it's off, the diode will be represented by an open circuit. Okay. This is the voltage drop V and this is I. Okay. What is V? V is equal to V positive minus V minus. V positive is actually 5 volt. Why is it 5 volt? Because there's an open circuit and the resistance will be useless. There's no current. So this point will be equal to this point. So 5 volt here. And the point this point the voltage at this point will be zero because it's grounded so the voltage is five volt the current is zero ampere as it's an open circuit now moving on to the third circuit the physical current is downwards again because this is the high potential and this is the low potential okay So the diode is again off. The diode is off. This is grounded, open circuit, 2.5 kilo ohm resistor, and here we have a minus 5 volt. This is V. Okay, I. Now notice that this is nothing, this is just a pointer. Those are just pointers. You can just ignore them. Okay. Now, what is V here? V is actually the positive minus the negative terminal. The voltage here is zero, and the voltage at this point is, yes, it's minus five. Why is it minus five? Because there's no current and the resistance is useless. And if the resistance is useless, this point is equivalent to the voltage at this point. So it's minus five, hence the voltage is five volt, okay? And I is again zero ampere because there's an open circuit. The last part actually it's not the last part there are two more parts <coughs> sorry this is low potential this is the high potential and this is the low potential and the physical current is in this direction direction or the physical current the diode is on so if the diode is on it will be represented as a short circuit. This is the resistance 2.5 kilo ohm, and this is the ground V and I. Okay, sorry, this is not the ground, this is minus 5 volt. Now, V is equal to what? It's the voltage at this point minus the voltage at this point. This point is zero, and this point is also zero because of the short circuit between them. So V is equal to V plus minus V minus 0 minus 0 is equal to 0 volt. Moving on to the current, it's 0 minus minus 5, this point, minus this point, divided by the resistance, 2.5 kilo ohm, which is equal to 2 milliampere. Okay? The last two parts for this question are these, the OR and the AND gate. Let's put them on a new page. Okay, paste. So here, this is an OR gate, right? This is an OR gate. This is an OR gate. And we said in OR gate, we always pick the highest voltage. So if this is three volt, then VY will be three volt. This side is on, the others are off. So V is equal to 3 minus 0. V plus minus V minus, which is 3 minus 0, which is equal to 3 volt. And I is equal to the high potential, 3 minus low potential, 0 divided by 1K, which is equal to 3 milliampere. Okay. Go, moving on to the AND gate. Okay. Here we have to pick the lowest voltage, which is 1, 
If this is 1, then this spot is 1. So V is equal to what? It's V plus minus a ground. It's actually, this is minus. This, they're comparing it to the ground. They're not comparing it with the same point. Okay? So V plus minus V minus. So it's 1 minus 0, which is 1 volt. Okay? And I is equal to this point minus this point according to the direction of the current 5 minus 1 divided by 1k which is equal to 4 milliampere okay we're done with this question let's move on okay. one more exercise before we conclude this video and move on to the junction diodes So here it says, assuming the diodes are ideal, find the values of I and V in the circuits of 4.6. Now, in those circuits, it might not be obvious at the first sight whether none or one or both diodes are conducting. In such case, we make an assumption that both diodes are on. Proceed with the analysis, then check whether we end up with a consistent solution so what does this all mean we will first whenever you have two more than one diet the safest the safest approach is to assume that both diets are on let's begin with part a okay assuming both diets are on okay how would the circuit look like? It will be as follows. Here we have the 10 volt, 10 kilo ohm, short circuit, short circuit, and this is the ground. This is 5 kilo ohm, and this is again minus 10 volt. Okay, so we need to find the voltage at this point. It's compared to the ground, so as if it's you're measuring the voltage only at this point. Okay, and we need to find I and I D2 okay so let's begin the voltage here is 0 volt why because it's grounded and if this is 0 then this is 0 and if this is 0 then this is 0 so what is V V is equal to 0 volt we're done with this then we can find I D2 I D2 is equal to this point minus this point divided by the resistance so it's 10 minus 0 divided by 10k which is equal to 1 milliampere now how can we find i the current i we cannot find it through ohms law because we, there's no resistance on this branch so what we can do is we can do kcl at this point in order to do kcl we need first to determine the current at this point let's call it i3 What's I3? I3 is equal to 0 minus minus 10 divided by 5k, which is equal to 2 milliampere. Doing KCL, you, it, the KCL will be I equal to, sorry, it will be I plus ID2, which is equal to I3. Hence, I is equal to I3 minus ID2. I3 is 2 milliampere and ID2 is 1 milliampere. So I is 1 milliampere. So here we have found the currents and the voltages. Now those solutions are based on an assumption. We need now to check is our assumption correct or wrong? How can we know if it's our assumption is correct or wrong? We need to check the polarities of the currents across the diodes. So we need to check the currents, the polarity for the currents of the diode so we need to check only these the polarities of these two or the signs of these two currents because they are they are on a diode there was a diode here and a diode here okay if the signs are positive then our assumption is correct so in this case our assumption is is correct why because the signs of 
the currents across the dyes are positive. Now, what will happen if the sign was negative? If the di if the sign was negative, this means the our or our assumption is wrong. Why is it wrong? Let's assume that I was negative. This means that the direction of the current is not in this direction, it's in the opposite direction, right? And if the diet was facing like this, facing downwards, then the current is opposite to the direction of the diet. Hence, the diet should be off, and we have assumed that the diet is on. Okay? So our assumption would be wrong if the current was negative. Okay? Now, let's take another example to illustrate what I mean. So in part A, our assumption was correct. Let's take part B. Okay? Okay. Part B of the question. So here we had 10 volt. We had here 10 kilo ohm. Actually, it was 5 kilo ohm. 5 kilo ohm. This is the diet. I'm assuming that it's on. And this is a ground. Here we have 10 kilo ohm again, and this is minus 10 volt. We need to measure V here, I, D2, I. Okay, let's start. So we said earlier that this point is zero because it's grounded. So this is zero and V is zero. So V is equal to zero volt. If V is equal to zero, then I D2 is equal to 10 minus zero over 5K, which is equal to two milliampere. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. How can we find I here? It's not I3. It's I. Let's call it I3. I3 is equal to 0 minus minus 10 divided by 10K, which is equal to 1 milliampere. Now, doing KCL at this point, we will end up saying i plus i d2 is equal to i3 so i is equal to i3 minus i d2 i is 1 milliampere minus 2 milliampere and this will result into minus 1 milliampere as you have guessed that our assumption is incorrect is wrong reason being the current I is negative okay this means that the direction of current is in the opposite direction and and as as the diode is facing downwards they are in opposite direction so the diode has to be off rather than on okay so our assumption is wrong we need now to repeat everything actually I haven't written that our assu assumption that assumption assume both diodes are on now what we need to do is that d2 has to be on because it's i was correct however i the diode across i has to be off we need to repeat it now okay so the circuit would be as follows after we have decided which which diode has to be off and which diode has to be on okay 5 kilo ohm Short circuit, this is an open circuit, okay? This is 10 kilo ohm, and this is minus 10 volt, okay? Now, this is ID2, this is I, and we call this I3. Great, so now what is I? I is zero, because there's an open circuit there, so no current. How can we find ID2? Now, V is not equal to zero because it's disconnected from the uh, ground. If you notice that this is actually a what? Both resistance are in series and ID2 with I3 are actually the same. So what we can say is that I3 is equal to I. I is equal to I3, which is equal to 10 minus minus 10 divided by the total resistance 10 kilo ohm this will give us 1.33 milliampere 
and as you have found the current you can simply find v by doing ohm's law you can say there are three ways actually you can use ohm's law by saying that i this should be id2 i think yes id2 i is id2 is equal to 10 minus v over 5k where v is equal to 10 uh, minus 5k multiplied by id2 which will give you 3.3 volt or you can say that i3 is equal to v minus minus 10 over 10k and v will give you the same thing or what you can do is nodal analysis you can do nodal analysis you can say v minus 10 over 5k plus v minus minus 10 over 10k equal to zero and if you compute v it will end you will end up with 3.3 volt okay so now we have reached to an end for ideal diodes in the next video we will hopefully cover the non-ideal diodes thank you